Sports Connection. Well, good evening. I uh, hope you're having a good one. Thanks a lot for joining us for the Dodge Sports Connection. I'm Bob Alvarez. You know, as Ed Sullivan often said, tonight we have a really good shoe. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Devil Rays, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, plus we'll be joined by Tampa Bay Storm head coach Tim Markham because the Storm opens its season tomorrow night when they host Albany. Remember, give us a call if you'd like to get on the show. We're at 727-437-1119 or toll free at 1-888-437-1119. You can also email us your questions at sports at baynews9.com. We're also on Bay News 9 radio at the moment at AM 620. So give us a call at that same number, 437 1119 and we will get you on the air immediately. Well, how about the Devil Rays? The streak has now reached six in a row and they got there tonight by coming from behind to beat the Mariners. Tonight, Seattle unloaded early. We're going to pick it up for you in the second inning. Two men are on for David Segui. Now he goes high. He goes deep to center field. <laughs> that one's gone. It's 3-0 Mariners. The Rays were down 4-0. Then they put it together. Wade Boggs at the plate. Getting closer to that 3,000th hit in the seventh. The Rays down 4-2. Boggs opposite field. Dave Martinez scoring. Rays down 4-3. They tied it on a sack fly. Then in the eighth, they won it and did so right here. Randy Wynn, crack high. Deep. <laughs> His first home run of the season, giving the Rays a 5-4 lead, and that is how it ended. The Rays go for their seventh straight tomorrow when they meet the Mariners at 635. All right, former Indiana Hoosier Butch Carter and the Raptors in Orlando tonight. Third quarter, Magic running. Matt Harpring to Daryl Armstrong. However, Magic trailing by five. Bo Outlaw. So to get the pass, he'll work inside. He'll come up with one of my favorite shots, the old jump hook. Too much Raptors tonight late in the fourth quarter. Nice move right there by uh, Vince Carter. Raptors win it 95 to 88. All right, some football here. Uh, Buccaneers head coach Tony Dungy has some new ingredients for the soup he's hoping is hot enough to get to the Super Bowl. Today, Dungy pulling out his fork because this is the thick brand and taking a taste. Around 86 players showing up for the first day of the mini camp, including number 92, the Buccaneers' number one draft pick, defensive tackle Anthony McFarland. The coaches also sampled some of the new stock, like quarterbacks Eric Zier, whom they imported from Baltimore, and third round draft pick Sean King. Dungy likes the taste of his new concoction, but he also knows it needs a bit of stirring. It's been a while since we've, we've been on the field, and uh, it's good to have everyone here. And I thought we got off to a good start, good enthusiasm, and uh, gave the rookies and the young guys a chance to, to see what we're all about and how we do things. Yeah, I feel pretty calm, just a little rusty, you know, getting back into it for the first time. First time really practice football since the senior ball. Uh, so just getting back in the groove, you know, trying to knock the rust off. It's a new environment. Um, you know, it's, uh, I think every year you have different things you got to get used to, and this year getting used to having different people in the room. I like all of them so far. I don't know any of them very well. Um, but uh, looking forward to working with all of them. Hopefully, you know, collectively we can make this team better. All right, uh, time for some uh, trivia. Tonight's winner, of course, received a $25 gift certificate, gift certificate to visit our friends at Beef O'Brady's. Well, let's see if you can handle this one. It's a toughie. Tonight's question, how many seasons has Tim Markham been a coach in the Arena Football League? Right. If you think you know the answer, give us a call at 727-437-2100. Think about it. We'll be back in two minutes. Well, the South loves trucks. It's all there is to it. For work or play, just get out and do it. The truck stop of the New South. A new Dodge. The truck stop of the New South. And a lemma. Dodge Rams are overall America's most powerful line of full-size pickups, the longest lasting, and Ram quad cabs were the first to offer four doors. Just imagine the possibilities that opens up. The truck stop of the new South, Ram the truck stop of the new South. The new Dodge. Uh-oh. 
Uh, I'm a junior VP, and all the junior VPs have one of these. <laughs> so I'll just call my secretary, and then she'll voicemail. Chuck number four is down. Gotcha. I'm a mailroom guy, and all the mailroom guys get to see the phones that the senior VPs get. Nextel's two-way radio feature makes ordinary cell phones seem ordinary. I do about 70,000 miles a year in this car, and I go through a lot of tires. My name is Louis LeBeau, and I drive this cab for a living. I'm also a volunteer fireman. I use this cab to get the fires. Whenever I have to spend money on this car, it comes out of my pocket. He's a top of the line Goodyear. They got him at Walmart. They got BF Goodyear. Goodyear. They got Michelin. That's where I got him right there. I sent my daughter in there for tires and all changes. I know they'll treat her right. They got name brand tires and all, and great prices. For the Walmart Tire and Lube Store, come around to the back door. How you gonna beat that? Trust Embassy Limousines on the most important day of your life with your most valued treasures and, like all of our corporate clients, to be right on time for your business's biggest day ever. Place an order with Embassy Limousines at our website or call toll-free at 1-800-RENT-A-LIMO or 447-4656 in Tampa Bay. We offer worldwide reservations, different styles and size limousines, perfect for any event or occasion. Call Embassy Limousines at 1-800-RENT-A-LIMO and we'll make your journey as memorable as the destination. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Michelhaney Tabasco. Pour Tabasco brand pepper sauce onto everything you eat. And we'd like to invite you to join us tomorrow night because our guest will be Paul Porter, the announcer for the Orlando Magic and the Tampa Bay Storm. Greg Campbell will be sitting here in the hot seat, so make sure you join us tomorrow. Let's bring in tonight's special guest. An old friend I haven't seen in a few years, the head coach of the Tampa Bay Storm, Tim Markham. Uh, you s wouldn't say anything about my hairdo, <laughs> but I, I have to say something about yours because I know people want to know something new for you. You know, when you get beat 62 to 31 in front of about 2 million households, you uh, <laughs> need to make some changes, and uh, certainly this is one of them. But, uh, no, it's just something for a little while. If we don't win very many games, I'll be back the other way. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the last game of the season, unfortunately, the loss let's in the don't. championship game. <laughs> no? All right, let's move ahead. But uh, as you said earlier to me before we went on, that makes for a long off season for yeah, you. Yeah, it does. I mean, it, we had a, an excellent season, bad game, but it just wasn't our day. Um, We'd beaten that team three times before, and they won the one that counted. Uh, you know, it, that really burns in your gut for, for all those many months. And the good part about football and the good part about athletics is that you, you have another year. You get to do something about it. And the thing that we can do about it now is win mm -hmm. and, and win this season and, and wind up and fulfill our goal, which is championship. Okay, we're going to get to some of your phone calls in just one moment. One more question from me. I mean, when you lose a game like that, I mean, is it a couple days? Is it a week? <laughs> or I guess where is the point where suddenly you say, okay, hey, it's over and we do have another year? You know, it, uh, it's the toughest one that I've ever had to deal with. I mean, because I think our expectations were so high and we did have one of the best football teams that I've ever, uh, ever coached, certainly in this league. And, uh, you know, it was so disappointing that I, it took a lot longer for me to, quote, climb out of the jar, so to speak. So uh, I'm not sure that, that I'm out of it yet. I think that once we play tomorrow night, uh, our total focus is on the 1999 season. And it has to be, you have to forget it, and you have to go forward. What time is game time tomorrow? 7.30. Okay, want to make sure all of you uh, get out there and see the Tampa Bay Storm tomorrow. Uh, with a season like you had last year, such a good team, do you make many changes for this year? You know, the changes uh, that we will make have been forced upon us. Uh, certainly trying to replace Johnny Harris, the defensive player of the year in our league, is, is the number one chore. We also went through an expansion draft where we lost five of our players to Buffalo, who was coached by one of my former assistant coaches, Dave Wenham. So I think that certainly the other players, uh, with the exception of Johnny, will be easier to replace. Uh, that's the question. Can we replace a guy like Johnny Harris? And if we do, then we'll be as good. Okay, the phone lines are burning up. We've heard them ringing. Uh, jo uh, Greg from Orlando, you're on with the head coach, so go ahead. Orlando? How you doing? How you, doing? <laughs> you took a call from Orlando? Hey, 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 come on, guys. I know I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm a Predators fan, but still. I, I had a question about the, uh, your coach or quarterback situation. What are you guys going to do for a backup? Okay, they, you couldn't hear the question, no. but uh, he wants to know the quarterback situation and what you will do as far as a backup is concerned. Of course, Peter Tom Willis is our quarterback. Uh, we have a backup, 
who has looked pretty doggone good. He was nine of ten against Orlando in the exhibition game. We got him, Josh Walwark from mm -hmm. uh, from Wyoming. Josh threw for over four thousand yards his senior year, and led Wyoming to a. Uh, uh, at one time were 12 straight wins. Well, uh, so I feel like that that's uh, hopefully uh, you never want to use that backup quarterback because that means some, some bad things have happened to, uh, to P.T. Willis. So, you know, that's our guy, number four. Uh, we're going to win or lose uh, with him. And uh, in an emergency situation, Josh Walwork uh, from Wyoming will be our quarterback. Do you see a maturing process with Willis as far as his ab adaptation to Certainly, from 1997 to 98, it was just a, a 300 or 180 degree uh, turn for him. He he really had a great year last year, uh, put up big numbers. Uh, uh, those two guys right there, LaFrance and, and Thomas, had good good years. But uh, PT now is has total control of the offense, understands uh, what we're trying to get done. He's like having a coach out on the field. We saw George LaFrance, uh, another guy, an old friend uh, I remember from years ago, and this guy just year in and year out just keeps doing it. George is amazing. I, I tell you, the, the, the best thing about him is that he practices so hard every day. He just runs. He keeps his body in shape. He, you know, he doesn't uh, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, just works his, uh, himself silly, and that's why you can play uh, for at, at length. He tells me that he's only 34, but I'm not quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would debate that a little myself. The other guy is speaking about receivers with longevity, Stevie Thomas. Stevie Thomas has been an outstanding player in this league. You know, I can remember being on the other end of the mm -hmm. Stevie Thomas uh, great plays. He made one of the all-time biggest plays in this franchise history against Albany in 1995 when we are dead, uh, dead beat. Uh, four, uh, we're four points down with uh, about seven seconds to go. He takes one, takes the kickoff off the net, and goes the length. We win the semifinal game, go to uh, play Orlando in the final, and win the championship. So uh, he's he's been an Albany killer uh, for uh, quite a few of these years, and hopefully uh, that'll happen tomorrow night tomorrow too. Night. Uh, there were skeptics about this arena football thing, and there probably right. still are. No question, you know, with the, the uh, trivia question now, I mean, I was selling used cars because the US, USFL had mm -hmm. folded. And Miles Davis, the guy that was the inventor of the run and shoot, calls me and he says, uh, you want to coach arena football? I said, arena what? <laughs> so, uh, you know, but now we're entering our 13th season. Uh, I mean, that's unbelievable. Um, let me ask you, and you, we talked a little bit about this earlier, too, and you talk about how the game has grown, the fact that you said day in and day out there are a number of phone calls of players out there who want to get in on this. Well, certainly. We get uh, 20 to 25 calls a day of uh, people that want to play, a lot of them with, with background, some of them NFL background. So uh, it, the thing that's happened now is that if you're not playing in the NFL, the Canadian Football League is in a situation now where if you're not in the NFL, you're going to play in our league. So. Uh, that is, uh, there's a lot of transition or a lot of movement back and forth, and that's, uh, as example, Johnny Harris going to Oakland. Mm -hmm. And with that, the quality of play in the league. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, I guess, take a look at the trivia right now uh, and then get back to some of your phone calls. Uh, the trivia question we threw at you, we were asking uh, how many seasons...